how did you go and uh, how did you keep that passion alive over the years to keep going and, and wanting to develop new talent? Because I think that's something you're so great at. Um, it, it's really my kids. Um, I'm fortunate. Um, all three of my kids um, can draw. My 18-year-old is uh, a wonderful uh, watercolor painter. Water, watercolor painter. And Jill Thompson, I have to thank you for that. Um, I would bring them as kids to the convention. But see, I'm just dad. Yeah. So they would hang out with Jill. <laughs> <laughs> and they were watching Jill, and, you know, uh, right. and her techniques and, and what kind of brushes, what kind of paint and stuff. And so now he's a real good painter. He has a better idea concept eye than I do. Um, um, he's in AP art and his, his composition stuff are, are amazing. And he also shares with me, um, I, I, we're both science geeks. Mm -hmm. So, thank the Lord. Um, he, um, he's going in September, he's graduating, he just graduated, just went to prom last night. He's graduating this year and in September he's going to UC Santa Cruz because oh, wow. he wants to be an astrophysicist. Oh wow. Really Either get into it. research or get become Neil deGrasse Tyson yeah. and illustrate what learning that? physics. That's so cool. And yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's an amazing process. It's living really through you because it's the same thing you wanted to be an astronaut. It kind of comes full circle. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah, and my, my little girl, my 14-year-old, she's now um, assistant uh, uh, manager in her, in her theater tech groups. And so, so they're all into art. So it was interesting for me because as a parent, you would like maybe if your kids you know, kind of followed in what of you course. wanted, what you did, and I must have done some something right that they did actually get at least interested in art. Yeah. And so it was really interesting. So that, for me, that kind of like carried from, you know, that high I got from like discovering a young lineal you yeah. and, and training him into who he is, who he would become today and, and other people. That kind of high of being able to foresee where someone is going to go and then getting to there, to there and then letting them and then them being able to take themselves off from there. And then now my kids come and they start getting interested in art and start taking it to where I wouldn't have taken it on their own direction and stuff. It's really, it, it, for me, it's, it, it, it's a high, other than drawing itself, because I've always loved drawing, being able to see somebody else do, do stuff. Like all the interns that we had in Wallace Arm was yeah. great. Watching Campbell, um, um, Travis, yeah. um, uh, Ali Bermejo, um, everybody, it's just really cool watching them go. So it's it's really just all everybody else just seeing, because even though back then was a big renaissance was when when Jim and I came in with, yeah. and with Todd and every we started this big renaissance, it, it's a lot more eclectic now even. Yeah. There, there's there's so many different styles and people really experimenting. So I mean it, it you got to remember back then when we were doing it, it was so very few people that wanted to get into it. And do now it. There's a lot. There's yeah, a lot. but see, you got to also remember, like, see, like when Neil Adams came in, you know, he was from the illustration world, and illustration, what's that? And then so what he brought into comics, we went, whoa, maybe we could apply this, and so everybody started to experiment. I remember when Bill Sienkiewicz came into in the industry, and it was, you know, uh, he was like emotion explosions yeah. on the page. Okay, it's not really a specific clean technique. No, it's, definitely... it's getting the emotion across with whatever tool you can. I, I was there. Everybody would turn their pages over and get out that rusty nail or that cotton swab and, <laughs> and try to make try these to effects subject. and stuff like try that. Try to copy because they saw greatness and the emotion was getting to them. They were yeah. getting an emotional reaction from yeah. it. So but see, that's how small the industry was, yeah. that somebody could... Um, have some experience in one other medium, bring it in, and then spark this inf uh, uh, inf infusion of a of, of, of variation and something new. Now, there's just so many different styles and different things, and, and, and you know, all the other industries have grown up. Like, you know, when I first got in, concept design was really not, you know, it was more technical yeah. than anything. It was draftsman, really, at yeah. the time. Um, now they're artists of, on their own, and they're now digital painters too on, yeah. on their own, and and so all the influence coming in, and everybody wants to switch pawns and stuff. So uh, there's there's a lot of creativity happening right now, um, 
uh, it, it's just what's in, you know what's you know what's really interesting. Here's a little tidbit that just struck me a couple of days ago. Even though back then, like I said, there weren't that many eyes on us because we weren't that successful, yeah. and now all the eyes are on us. Yeah. Well, if you actually look at the publishing numbers, yeah. my X Men, our X Men, averaged four hundred thousand. Wow, that's crazy. A month. That's like it's unheard of in today's comic. Yeah. You, you know what the cancellation number was one twenty five. That's just crazy because I mean, even the top selling books right now are, are, are around 125. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the the market has changed so much. It's changed so much. People don't remember. So like when I first got in, Carl had this. Carl Potts had this thing called Double Vision. It basically was a a, a story that they 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 did it do, and they 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 would give it to everybody new as a tryout to see if you can tell really tell the story. Yeah. But the caveat was. You have to do it in eight pages. You have to take a 20 page story and no. do it in eight pages. Oh, wow. That's tough. So if you can get through that, you can get you're ready. Anything. Yeah. You can you're, get through anything. You gotta okay. make it work. Now, here's the other side to that because, okay, you can tell a story, but you're kind of slow. Okay? So you gotta have both. You gotta tell the story and you gotta hit that deadline. Okay, but we don't wanna let you go. So everybody, the industry is doing so well already. Everybody had a story, you know, like Chris Claremont had this other idea, and so he would write it out. And then we go, okay, let, well, okay, we'll hold it, put it in hold, it's approved, and we'll try to figure out where we can drop it, you know? And that was also fail-safe. Yeah. If we have a, a, a problem with a deadline, we, we can, can just, just drop this in there, yeah. right? You're good to go. So, yeah. yeah. So Carl goes, hey, you need to make some money. Hey, here's the story, and I could pay you at least 45 bucks. I could, pay, I could, I could, I could get paid something and do something really professional on a real deadline, even though it wasn't a published deadline, but he, he treated it as a real deadline. Yeah. So I get some real experience, as opposed to now where there isn't that that extra money running around inside the system. No, there's not. It's there's very, not. Everything's very yeah. tight. So now, as a young artist, you have to be 100%. We cannot accept you unless you're 100%. Because again, a week delay in a deadline, that's what, a couple hundred thousand or yep. so? You know, so we can't afford that. We, you have to be tested out before you can join the ranks now. But back then, you can get eased in. You know, again, again, you know, I sound like an old guy, I am an old guy, but that was the real difference back then. There was a lot more freedom back, back then. Oh.